Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Kellen Boyle. Uh, I'm an actor and teacher at the Hood School of Acting, and I'm going to be the host for this discussion that we're going to have here today. Uh, these three women are the total package when it comes to preparing actors for a successful career. You've got uh, Jessica, who teaches the foundation, um, believing in her imaginary circumstances and connecting with her emotional instrument. You've got Wendy, who talks about how to market yourself and the business side, right? The show business. Yeah. You're the business side of the acting. And then you've got Amy Linden here, uh, who teaches you how to book the job, one of the most important parts, right? This is like the trifecta. I know, yeah, it's the total package. Um, so the purpose of this video is to provide just a, a deeper look into uh, the actor's process in, and kind of how to navigate the industry and the, the journey uh, of having a successful career. Uh, if you guys could kind of explain the, the business or the technique of acting and, and what each of you kind of uh, uh, bring to the table for actors. Okay. Um, so, as Kel mentioned, I'm Jessica Hood Morris. Um, I've owned Hood School of Acting for over 20 years now. I've been teaching the Miser technique for oh, about 22 years. Um, I studied under Robert Carnegie at the prestigious Playhouse West, who studied under Miser himself. Um, I can talk about the Miser technique itself, which is Basically, teaching you, the concept is to teach you to live truthfully under imaginary circumstances. So, something I talk about often is, you know, when famous people are being interviewed, one of the first questions that gets asked is, what is acting to you? And I feel like you pretty much always hear acting as reacting, acting as listening, acting as responding, right? So the miser technique is, that's the foundation of it, is to listen, respond, to be present with your partner. Mm -hmm. From there, we'll teach you how to have a point of view, how to have an emotional point of view, to be able to connect with your emotional instrument, and to be able to use all that with scene work. And that's ideally what we're learning in the miser technique through a series of exercises. Hmm. Awesome. That's cool. cool, that's interesting. Wendy, can you tell me a little bit about, about uh, your business and, and what you can bring to actors? Yeah, so I teach the Hollywood Winter Circle Academy and that's an online training program with a combination of recorded videos and live instruction, uh, guest speakers, agents, managers, casting directors, working actors who come in and talk about what the business is really like. Because we're trying to take actors out of the dream of being an actor and into the reality of being an actor and making sure they understand there's a ton of work that goes involved that's involved with becoming really good and then figuring out who you are and what you're selling and then marketing it and branding it, building relationships and connections, learning how to behave in the business, how to network with people, how to be a great client for agents and managers. Mm -hmm. And ultimately you can have all of that together, but if you don't know how to act, and if you don't know how to book the job, then you're always just gonna be you know, dreaming about being an actor. So for us at Hollywood Winter Circle Academy, it's about understanding the holistic experience of being in the business. How to take care of your mastery of your craft, your marketing materials, and your mindset and your spirit. And if you put all those three things together, then you become, you're a winner. Yeah. You know, you can be a winner. That's why it's called Hollywood <laughs> Winner's Circle. And our winners, when? Okay. Uh, and Amy, can you please tell me about uh, what you what you introduce to actors and what you provide for them? Well, I am like a Russian skating coach for actors. <laughs> okay, that's how I would describe it. Um, the technique is 28 years old. Um, I created it because I was having issues booking and I studied everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. I studied at the Playhouse um, when I was 16. I've been an actor since I'm 10. I studied in London. Um, I studied with Stella Adler. I have a BFA from, a, who cares? I mean, honestly, really who cares? Name drop it, no, I, I, just kidding. Well, I mean, most yeah. of them, they're all dead, so, you know. <laughs> and we are here. Yeah. Us great people. Great. To help actors book a job, you know what I'm saying? Um, so, it doesn't really matter who you've trained with, it matters that you can take everything that you've learned and know how to book a job. So um, I created a 15 guideline map to booking a technique that helps actors tell a great story um, and how to break down a script according to the writer's intent using your imagination, some of Meisner, some of Adler, and a lot of me on how I booked like all these, this work on television and film I have 
a lot of IMDb credits from learning how to book, mm -hmm. right? So I better book myself to in order to teach other people, right? Right. But I wasn't wasn't booking television. It's really a hard beast to to really uh, overcome. So now the technique has 53 network series regulars, an Emmy winner, an Imogen winner, and, and it's international. It's thousands of people working all around the world. I have books, online courses, and, um, and there's nothing better that makes me cry when I see my book that's beaten up, <laughs> when people underlined it, highlighted it, earmarked it, because right. that's what I used to do, <laughs> and that they write me from like Australia or Ireland and say, I read your book or, or I took your course and, and I'm booking jobs now. That's, that's awesome. all I care about. That's amazing. That's all I care about is actors working. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, um, and this is another question just kind of for the table uh, as well. Um, but what would you say are kind of the biggest... Wendy, you touched on this a little bit, where you said that the dream of being an actor. What would you guys say are the biggest misconceptions about the industry or about acting itself uh, that you guys encounter? And, and uh, if you guys want to go in, in any way. i got to get out my very long list. I know, I know. <laughs> we keep, in, keep in mind we are on a time, time schedule here. Uh, uh, but I, you know, if, you, if you had to narrow it down to, to a couple yeah. of, of main things, what, what would I you think what I, the way that I teach is I, I teach in two ways. One, here's what you should do, and here's what you shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. And I can figure out what actors shouldn't do by watching them make mistakes for years and years and years, and then seeing that actor's career go nowhere. And then decide, like, take a look at what actors are doing that is working and watch their careers go somewhere. And then look and see, okay, what should an actor be doing? What should they not be doing? So what I think they tend to do is they, they think it's going to happen overnight. That is the, one of the biggest misconceptions, that mm -hmm. they're going to be a star on a series regular, you know, next year. And... Uh, the, no, you mean tomorrow. Or tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, and it's, it's like, if I sign with you... Will I be a series regular next year? Exactly. So I think one you of the- You want guarantees. No, yeah, yeah guarantees. <laughs> so one of the things is, the big misconception, in my opinion, another one is that you think you need an entire demo reel to get an agent or manager. When we work in the business of clips now, mm -hmm. and, and because of the digital technology, you can shoot clips at places like Hood School of Acting, you can shoot some at your house at self-tapes mm -hmm. that are so specific to your type and to what you do that you do not need an entire reel from projects you've done to get representation. Mm -hmm. So actors can spend five, six years trying to do student films to get footage that's never good enough to really sell the product. Yeah. So that's a huge misconception. I would rather send them straight to you. Here's their type. Shoot something like that, please. Put it on their actor's access and get footage just of them and not far away. And I think that's a big thing with people's demo reels is you can't even, where are they? Ooh, exactly. You know, and then it's the majority of someone else talking as well, but people just don't You don't get, get it. That. Yes. And also, yeah. when, they, when they have a lot of these clips, it starts on the other actor. Yep. Or the person is two African Americans in the scene in the same height, same age range, same category, or two blondes, or two mm -hmm. Asian <laughs> women. Yeah. Like, you're selling your competition in the scene. So always having an opposite actor and, and making sure that it features the actor yes. and not the other person. Some actors will spend five years with the wrong footage and they don't know why they don't get auditions, why they don't get representation. Yep. I know for me it took, it took about three and a half years before I had what I would consider a professional like demo reel yeah. put together uh, because I didn't, I, at the time, there weren't services like this available. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Jessica, what, what would be something you would say is a, is a big misconception you get? I would just jump stuff? off of what Wendy was saying. I mean, honestly, yeah. some people will come to me and say, so if I take classes in two months, can I be in a commercial? And it's like, oh gosh, <laughs> just have no clue how hard it is in this industry. There's gonna be someone else that is gonna work their butt off that is gonna be that much better and blow everyone out. In, in the room Absolutely. and people just don't get it. They think, oh, I have a good look so and I can read. Um, and it's not about that. It's about living the circumstances, really putting yourself in there and really feeling it and moving people. And you can't do that unless you're trained. And you know, and it takes a while to exactly. get to that point. It takes learning a technique and then learning a booking technique, just like we were talked about. And I think that's the biggest thing that drives me bonkers when people come to me and say, you know, I, I have a good look. I think I can make it, you know, two months. And it's like, two months. <laughs> well, or this question, how long do I have to train? Uh, how much, like, how much training counts? Yeah. It's like, how many classes I do, do I have to take uh, until it counts? I always tell, you train until you're so good 
that you blow everyone else out of the yes. water and then you keep training so that you can stay that good so that someone else doesn't come take your job. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what you would say, I'm sure, correct? Well, that's what I was going to ask. Like, what would you say? I, you know, I think, I think the biggest problem is, is that actors don't understand that it's a competition. Mm -hmm. And that's my problem with a lot of people, that they just come in, they come in at a general read or they come mm -hmm. in without um, marinating on the material and creating the circumstance and creating the environment for themselves. And, and they think that that's enough. And they're satisfied with just good. Yeah. And um, I've seen people come out of nowhere that have made it and because they had the little crack to the door that opened of opportunity. And they were so brilliant. Because you can't just be good, you can't just be great. You have to be brilliant. Mm -hmm. And the brilliance is in the specifics. And so how are you gonna understand the specifics unless you spend time marinating on where things are for you in a deep, specific way? And they're okay with good. And then they wonder why things aren't happening. Um, mm. And it's not about the amount of time that you study yeah. or the amount of places you studied. It's about what is your passion to getting to the exact truth. What is something that each of you know now that you wish you knew or, or wish you could convey to somebody who's, who's just starting out? I uh, actually, a student asked me that. Don't you remember? A student know, asked us that during the Q&A. Hmm. Like what's something, and I, my answer was, was making sure that I hung out with the right people. Oh yeah, mm. good one. You know, mm -hmm. and, and I'm gonna add to that is like learn how to say no, you know? Learn how to say no because time is so fleeting and your youth just goes and, and, and that time needs to be spent going after what it is that you dream of. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I would have just picked better people to hang out with. Um, and I would have learned to say, no, you know what, I, I have to do this for my career. You're gonna go as far as the five people around you, right? That's uh, like- this. I love that, that was great. So you have five really strong people around you and people who are ahead of you. I think what I've learned that people in this business tend to do is never think they're good enough, never think they're valuable enough, never think they have what it takes, and self-sabotage themselves by overanalyzing and being hard, very highly critical upon themselves. And, and one thing actors don't understand, which I hope you do, I hope you understand this, <laughs> is that you are the product and what you're selling is good enough. Mm -hmm. You just need to make it the best you can possibly make it. But what you're selling is the key to your success. Yes. You are not there to be what the casting director, you think the casting director wants you to be because you don't know, you'll never know. You're not there to, I, I use it like this. Here's a coffee, I gotta use props. Okay. Here's a coffee, okay. here's a water. The water's not trying to be the coffee, the coffee's not trying to be the water, okay? Coffee presents itself and says, hello, I'm coffee. The water presents itself, I'm water. And then I choose, do I want water or do I want coffee? And actors, what they do is they say, well, if I could be more like this, maybe I should be like this. Maybe if I was taller, shorter, fatter, taller, blacker, whiter, blue eyes, longer hair, blah, blah, blah. how can I be what they want me to be? You're not, your job is not to be what they want you to be. Your job is to say, okay, what am I? I'm water. Yeah. Well, you know, I have to tell you that's a huge component to booking as well. Because um, I know. talk to people about being the gift, because you are the gift. Yes. They're going to bring in uh, eight to 10 people to call back, and you need to rep best represent what your gift is that you're bringing, because they're not going to bring eight or 10 of the same people back. Mm -hmm. And so if you're, you're busy looking at other people, which is what you're talking about, mm -hmm. and try to blend into what you think somebody else, what they're looking for, then um, you're never going to represent a strong way to go. Yeah, and it's also accepting who you are, your good traits, your bad traits, whatever it is you call that, and acknowledging that that's who you are, there's, mm -hmm. and that's what you're selling. And then a, a, be excited about it. Uh, you know, a, I approve this man. I always say be like Donald Trump in this area, folks. <laughs> Don't do that. I will, because I think he's the best salesman I've ever seen. 
This is the greatest water there will ever be. There will never be a better water. No one else will ever make a better water than this water. This is the only water you will ever need. This is the greatest water there ever is. That's the kind of attitude you have to have going into an audition. It can't be, here's some water. Do you think maybe you might want this? I'm not sure if it's what you well, want. It might not be I, I think a lot of people are not that way because they don't know what they're doing. And that's and um, they don't believe in what they well what because they, are. they don't know what they're doing. Uh, they don't have foundation, and they mm -hmm. think that they don't have to train, mm -hmm. right, Jess? Yeah. They think they don't have to train, and that the, oh they're looking for me, you know. And then they have the, they have the sudden realization that 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 they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Well, so I it creates like, insecurity, mm. right? I got caught up in that when I first started. I moved out to LA, and I I was huge into James Dean, which I still love, and Marlon Brando. So I you felt know. like <laughs> she's got good taste. Still love them, my favorite actors. But I got caught up in I, if I'm going to be good, I have to be like them. So then I started wearing. I mm. found myself wearing all black, and that's not me. Like, oh, I have black eyes. I was just about to say. <laughs> that's not that's me. Not me normally. But <laughs> I'm very bright, and you know, yeah. and I love clothes. Um, but I found myself like I have to wear all black, 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 and then I have to be that you know dark actor, and I and I can't eat that much because I need to be a starving artist. And then I and I came to this realization probably a year into my training that what am I doing I'm not James Dean I'm not Brando I can still be a phenomenal actor in my own way kind of yes, like you yes. know Amy's shirt I am enough I am okay with myself and then I can approach auditions that way but I still want to train in a deep way like they do and I want to have you know the depth like they do but I don't need to be them yes <laughs> and that's yeah. kind of going off what you guys were and saying. Brando yeah. doesn't need to be James Dean nope. James Dean yep. doesn't need to be Brando it's, it's about embracing your own personal yes. qualities your own personal strengths and weaknesses and putting them into your character and walking to the room proudly like appreciating everything you are that yep. you're bringing to the table and if you have that kind of confidence you're more likely to book the job than if you go in insecure doubting yourself second guessing yeah. Uh, that's 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 a recipe for failure. So mm -hmm. I that, yeah. I think actors take a while to come into that yeah. appreciation of themselves <laughs> and the gift that well, they are. Well, well, this I, I always say the same reason why you become an actor is the same reason why you're not booking. Hmm. It's because a lot of actors um, they became actors because they want to be loved mm -hmm. and people people watch me and yeah. please yeah. love me, yeah. you know. And that's the same reason why it's hard to book a job because they keep reaching to yeah. the casting director to love them. You know, and so it's highly dysfunctional. Um, mm. The people that make it the fastest, like um, Adam Brody made it really fast. I was, managed him. I managed him, and I was his coach since he's 16 years old. Mm -hmm. And he made it really fast because his parents loved him. Not that my right. parents did it. <laughs> Not that other parents don't. But I'm telling you, the the they loved they overloved him. His confidence level was so high as a child. Mm. And many of us come to acting yeah. <laughs> and all of us are so broken and, yeah. and we didn't get enough or we come from divorced homes, whatever. I mean, the list goes on. But that's why we went into acting because there's a community, right? Yeah. I mean, that's why we love acting. Mm -hmm. You do a movie, you're like, oh, they're my family. Yeah, you do, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, your, it's your temporary family, right? It, doesn't, it feels like that. Mm -hmm. Everybody says they're going to get together. They never, never <laughs> do. They never do, but it feels like they will at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you give them their phone and everybody exchange numbers. But anyway, the point of the matter is that, that that's... That's part of why people have a difficult time and their esteem is so low. Mm. Because they're broken people, but those are the people that play the best characters if they could only bring their brokenness into their work. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. bring it into well, the work. Piggybacking yeah. off of what you guys are saying with that. Um, that's good, Amy. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah. And piggybacking off of that is, is, you know, if you're, like you're talking about with the coffee and the water, is if you come in and you're, you're like not a tough person, but you're, the role is for a tough person. Oh. So you're like, I'm gonna play tough. Oh. You're now playing like your idea and of concept. Tough. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of and, and, when and, are you tough in real life? Because yeah. there's times where we have to be tough for right. a reason, right? So yeah. you've got to tap into that. Yeah. Whereas when do I feel tough right. and when do I need to? Yes, I agree. Very yeah. good. Because yep. yep. I get I get bodyguard auditions all the time, and I'm like, I'm 170. Who am I guarding? A child, <laughs> you know? But it's like. If I try to be tough and intimidating and imposing the way The Rock is tough, intimidating, and imposing, it's not going to work. Yeah. But you know who else is tough, intimidating, and imposing? The Joker, and he's like 100 pounds oh, soaking yeah, yeah, wet, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. How are you tough? How are you intimidating and imposing? So That's I, great. Absolutely, like own yep. your truth. Yes. Right? Um, well, Jess, what's something that you've um, learned that you know now that you wish you knew when you first started? 
When I went out to LA right away, I was not into drinking because I handled that when I was younger. <laughs> 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 oh, you got it out of the way. Yeah, I did. <laughs> so I was like on a mission. I worked my butt off, literally. I was like nonstop. But that was the one thing is be me and be okay with being me. It took me about a year to get through that. A lot of people, I think, when they go to LA, they're caught up in, it's LA, so let me party, the party scene, drink, and this and that. I didn't have to deal with that. It was more, let me be comfortable with, this is me. Yes. And approach a scene from me and not my favorite actors. How do you decide your look or brand, right? People always talk about what, uh, what my type is, yeah. right? How, how do you decide, uh, as an actor, like what your look or your brand is? I think, well, first of all, I send people to a man named Mark Atterbury, who's a really good type branding expert. Uh, but I also think that your brand is who you really are. I think that there's types of roles, like you might play a secretary or a wife, a mother, a husband, doctor, teacher, lawyer, cop. Uh, those are types of roles. But your brand, in my opinion, is really the essence of who you are as a person, your genuine, true essence. So if you take someone like, um, Diane Keaton. She's very neurotic. Mm -hmm. She's very always, you know, and Bette Midler is very big. And, yeah. and when you want a neurotic actor, you, you would cast Diane Keaton because that's, she has that essence. But I believe it's just really her real essence. I don't think the circumstances that you're playing in a part, like if you're murdering somebody or whatever, that's not a real story. That's not really happening. But your real essence, whether you're um, intimidating, or you're uh, very peaceful and very gentle, or you're um, very loud and aggressive. I think those are your real essences, and that's your brand. Um, you know, it's interesting. It's like, I personally play blue collar a lot, okay? So now I might get a, a photo of me looking white collar, and maybe get an audition of me looking white collar, and maybe get a callback because I'm good, but the white collar person, the real white collar person, is going to go in and is going to take my job. So I just wasted my time going in for white collar just because I captured it mm -hmm. in one frame right. for a photo doesn't mean yeah. that I'm going to book that job. Yeah. So really understanding also your socioeconomic status mm -hmm. and where you fit and, and, and the industry also ends up telling you where you fit as well. If you can understand your essence on just taught terms of booking and being able to play things, because Robert De Niro is incredibly shy, but yet he beat people up in Raging Bull, right? So if you can understand your what is your essence and 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 push it out of the way, then you could play a serial killer's wife like I did. <laughs> but you have to understand what what you're coming at. What you so, uniquely bring. Yeah, what what you're coming at. But like if 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 I am that vivacious person that's that's smart and knows and strong, that somebody and is a leader and exactly. can take charge. And I'm I'm about to play somebody that's not then I better get rid of that. Yeah, but what I, t I agree with you 100%. You understand? Yeah. But, but not everybody can do that. No, and training. Yeah, they're not they, trained, they, enough, they're to not trained enough to do that. But also, can I say that when you're a beginning actor just starting out, they're gonna be more likely to book stuff they actually are right now. I agree now. completely. Yep. Yeah. You know, so in your case, let's say you were just starting out, not, you don't have 171 items. Okay, but I'm just saying. I know. I'm saying like you don't wanna be in on the wrong thing, Correct. which is what you're talking about. Yeah, but what I'm saying is you're an accomplished actor with 171 IMDb credits, okay? This is like, uh, now you've already, you've really mastered who you are as an actor. When someone walks into the room, I'm gonna look at what's their real essence right now, that's what I'm gonna cast them as, period. That's absolutely. Would you agree? Absolutely. And I also think that they need to look on television and see who's got their job. I like what you say that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, because it's like, you know what, that person's like me. <laughs> like Jennifer Coolidge so took like all that. my jobs. Right? You know, I'm like, what's up with that? It's because her and Christopher Guest got to know each other. So align yourself with great mm -hmm. filmmakers. Yes. Because that he made her career. I yeah. mean, completely made her career. One, I really like you guys talking about too about the, the market will kind of tell you as well, right? A lot of you're, times you're when you're developed, theory. Wendy's yeah. talking about at the beginning of your career. Sure. Which is absolutely Perfectly and what right. she's saying is absolutely perfect for what, you know, when they're further advanced. Yeah. But when an actor is just starting out and they don't have TV credits, they don't have casting relationships, they've never booked a single co-star on television, they do not know what to do, they should stick to the closest is to what they are.
So if they're a son or a daughter or somebody's husband or a wife or a mother, then they should create clips like that. If they're a student, they should create clips like a student. If they are, have their day job is a doctor, create a clip like a doctor. Or if they work for NASA, create a science clip. Yeah. I mean, don't stretch beyond what you're already extremely good at and then get in the door with that first. Yeah. Then once you get in the door, you build relationships with casting, then you start to look beyond that to what other roles you can play. Yeah, I think it's also to piggy, piggyback on that. Mm. Have nice I nails. Like that. You have to have nice nails too. Um, to uh, really understand what your skills are too, because oh. you can get a job if you're a martial artist. You get a job if you speak languages. Yeah. So a lot of people mm. have gotten breaks from just really like getting a clip. Um, I, I I say you know let's say you're you you your first generation Mexican, maybe maybe uh, uh, do a clip with you speaking Spanish to your parents, because they don't speak English, maybe, and, and there's a detective that comes to the door, so and then you do a, um, um, like a... Uh, interpreter in, translator. Thank you, thank you for New interpreting the, inter <laughs> the interpreter thing. Um, you, you, you interpret to, so they don't take them away, or they don't, you know? Mm -hmm. And it, it could be like a great scene, because here you're first generation speaking English. And well, that's Spanish. something that you say is so important, because a lot of actors do not have footage that represents what they do. So that's the, like they can sing, but there's no singing footage. They dance, but there's no dancing footage. Yeah. They play an instrument, but there's no footage. Yeah, it's ridiculous. They speak five languages, but they don't have a clip of them speaking five languages. Or they do different accents, but there's nothing to prove it. I yeah. would say, if you say you can do it, you've got to prove you can do it. Because yeah. as a manager, and you know, as I'm producing, say you're, you're a client, you're an actor, and I'm representing you, and you say you play sports, and you play the piano, you sing, you dance, you do karate, show me. I can't sell it to her unless you give it to me. Yeah. So a lot of actors, I say, I meet them and I'm like, you know, do you have any of that on your, no? Yeah, I know, it's ridiculous. What the heck are we doing here? You know here? a really good thing to do is, like you, you can do a scene where, where you're, you're recording in a studio and then the detective interrupts the recording of the studio. There it but is. But then you're singing a little bit. There it is. You know, so we see you can sing yeah. and then we see you can act and you put it together in the scene. Yes. Well, we have clips all yeah. the time where someone will speak French or a different language and we'll have them talk to the server. In yes, in French. Something. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's so smart. So be creative, show your talents. That's your point. Yeah. You're supposed yeah. to be showing your talents talents, you know? Something else I was thinking hmm. to go off of what you guys were saying. So we just did a scene in class not too long ago. It was maybe a month ago. And it was for this girl that was a stalker and kidnapped um, a oh. famous person, right? So everyone that approached the scene, and this is where we talk about approach, right? Everyone that approached the scene, literally, all the girls did it like, oh, so you're awake. And they all did it the same, <laughs> just like this crazy person. And I said, hmm. guys, what's going on here? We see 15 people doing this the same exact way. What can we do? And they said, well, I mean, Jess, I'm not a serial killer, or I'm not, serial, I'm not a stalker. You know, I wouldn't kidnap someone. And I said, yeah, of course, but we're acting. So I said, now how can we make this more interesting? And so I kind of sat back and I was like, so me, if Jessica was gonna kidnap any famous person, it would be not someone that I think's attractive like Bradley Cooper, it would be Bob Dylan or Al Pacino. So I would love to get in the car with either of those two people now because I absolutely adore both of them, but my approach Watch out. would be- Watch out, Al Pacino. <laughs> She's keep coming for you. Out, yeah. He does but, like younger women though. But, so. but <laughs> let's face it, my approach would be differently, right? If I was kidnapping Bob Dylan, I would be more like laid back, low key. If I was kidnapping Al Pacino, I would be more charismatic and that changes everything so it doesn't mean I have to be someone that's gonna kidnap someone it yeah. means I find who I would if I was to ever kidnap which I wouldn't but you never know though. yes yeah you never know um, but who I would want to and then I look at the scene that way and then it makes it more interesting and I wouldn't be doing it like every other single person that did it those 15 people did well, it the same they, way what they yeah, forgot exactly, exactly. what they forgot to mention was what you're talking about which is who am I relating to yes. okay how do you yeah. so really not yeah. not understanding who you're talking to like how I how yeah. I would speak to Al <gasps> Pacino <laughs> would be different than I would speak to you know let's say my father you know or yeah. I mean, like, yes. like the, by, uh, that's what changes. So yeah. people aren't yeah. asking enough yeah. questions. Nope. They just do it. They just no, go they and do it, do and it becomes an idea and a concept. Yep. Well, then you might as well just join a sketch troupe. But that yeah. reminds me of a exactly. movie where yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal or somebody actually did, no, no, uh, I can't remember who, but somebody's kid was kidnapped. And when they found the kidnapper, Prisoners. they, which is it? Prisoners. Yes, and they took the kidnapper 
hostage and tortured him until they told him where his kid was. Mm -hmm. So it depends uh, on the circumstances. Yeah. You know, yeah, if someone took my father, uh, yeah. and then I found out it was you who took him, I would be kidnapping you. <laughs> <laughs> Until yeah. you told me where my father was. So and this was a very light scene, like, it wasn't deep like that. Yeah, so then no. it's like, you gotta find <laughs> the approach. As long as you have some sushi. <laughs> <laughs> if you bring sushi, I'll go. <laughs> just in the James Woods Family Guy trap. Yeah. Some sushi in there. Yeah, just give me some sushi. And, yeah, we're good to go. and let me just, like, shop at, like, Macy's just for a little bit. You know, then I'd be good. You can kidnap me if you take you me. Give me my credit card. Well, uh, uh, Amy, for and again, everyone, please feel free to contribute. But uh, as for auditions, what what would you say helps actors stand out? And then and then also, what's a pet peeve you see from actors uh, when they are doing their auditions or approaching their auditions? Well, I think if they run it a million times with somebody, it's going to sound like they ran it a million times. Okay, I think. Um, uh, it's really bad training to uh, to have 20 takes, okay? Mm -hmm. If you can get to a place where you get it on the first or the second take and it's really brilliant and you, and you feel like you've embodied it, um, I think a, a big pet peeve is really having a bad reader. Oh, I think yeah. the reader should not be acting. A lot of those uh, readers mm -hmm. want the role too. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, shut up. You know, yeah. I have my, my office manager always reads with me and I have her stand in the corner with her back to me so I don't even see her <laughs> because I pick up energy from all my miser training, you know? I'm like, ah, oh, energy. <laughs> and, and so I, I think she's judging me. I mean, even though she's not, I think think she's judging me. I think they have to be very clear about, again, who's around them. Yeah. Everybody needs to feel supportive. And don't pick people to read with you that you're gonna that you're gonna feel bad if you have to do another take. That adds to the guilt that the character does not own. Mm. So you have to have a very clean vessel and start at zero and make sure hey, you're you're completely clean so the character can funnel through you. And, and, but, but if you have all this stuff going on with you, you're never gonna book. So I don't think people understand that any time that there's some extra stuff on them, it puts them a sliver away of booking the yeah. job. I agree with self-taping too. Mm -hmm. If you can have your, ideally, your self-tape already set up so you don't have the stress of having to, or I always talk about putting like X's on the ground where you'd put your light so you don't even have to think about where's my placement, and instead you just get in there and you're able to tape. Yeah. Because that's extra stress trying to figure out where's my lights going, where's my backdrop, and all that. If you can just like have it mapped out ahead of time and put them directly on, if you can't leave it up at all times, put it directly on the floor, that helps out a lot, so yeah. that way you're not having that stress. And I also think, take too. a break after you set it up, because you got your, you know, yes. your technician hat on, setting everything yeah. up. Yep. Or take a break, do something else, get yeah. back to zero, like you. Yeah, to get say. to zero. Yeah. You know, and their eye line, yeah. their eye line is always wrong. I don't know why they always put people over there or yeah, over there, over there. Or yeah. when when. The juice is right there. Yeah. So they're not looking right in the camera, but they're looking mm -hmm. a little to the right, or a little to the left, and just be clear about that, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah. They're also, their heads down a lot. They put things down here on the floor when they're yeah. talking. Yeah, right? their heads down yeah. a lot. Yeah. I mean, it, it's like, well, Amy, I would never talk on the phone like that. I'm like, yeah, but in TV land, you have to. You're You're the cheater, right? You know, this is TV, yeah. you know? Yeah. And also, yeah. I, my biggest pet peeve is I don't think a lot of people watch a lot of television product mm -hmm. oh. and that they think just because you're a great actor you're gonna get mm -hmm. a job but you might not get a job for that show so right. it's very important that you understand the tone and the style mm -hmm. of the show mm -hmm. um, because you have to literally look like you're already on the show yes and watch the show oh. before yeah. you audition for it don't just go in without yeah. watching yeah the show. and don't watch the role of the oh my god what's happening I'll here? send somebody a scene mm -hmm. And they'll go and watch who got cast and then in it. And they'll try to mimic. And they'll try to mimic the person. Yeah. I'm like, oh my god, how you book it is never going to be how you shoot it on television, and and how you, and and acting and booking it's a separate beast. So stop duplicating somebody else's performance. Yeah, that's insane. Just in case. Just in case you didn't know, it's insane. Just in case you didn't know it, that's insane. <laughs> well, Jessica, what, what would you say is the value of pursuing a, a technique or, or method or pro making sure that you have some type of method or process? So I strongly believe every actor should have a technique. It doesn't have to be Meisner. It could be Stella Adler, Strasberg, Chekhov, 
you know, whatever works for you. It's just when you're going to get to set and that director says to you, hey, I need for you to be there and go there, you have to have that technique to get there. Um, you know, I obviously strongly believe in the miser technique because it, in my opinion, teaches you all that you need in, as far as a technique, listening, responding, connecting, believing in the imaginary circumstances mm. is so important. Um, and having that emotional connection as well to your relationship with your scene partner and the and how you feel about the doing in the scene. Um, you know, I just feel like so many people, <laughs> when they come to me, it's like, okay, so I'm gonna do a technique and how long is it gonna take, two, three months? Whereas I always like to explain it, you know, it's like learning a language or mm -hmm. an instrument. It takes a while. And you know what? You can't go to a guitar lesson and then do the lesson and then put the guitar down for a whole week and then go back to the lesson and expect, you know, for it to work and then put on a show. Same thing right. with the technique. You need to learn it and you need to practice. You need to be practicing outside of class as well. And then when you get to set, you will be good to go because you've practiced for so long. Yes. But yeah, and you, you have yeah. to stay there a while too. Yes. I mean, people jump around. Yep. Because they just one. want your name on their resume. Yes. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah that's that. ridiculous. Yep. You've got to get the skill. I like that <laughs> idea mm. of the instrument, you know? It's yeah. like, I want to play guitar professionally. So I'm going to buy one, take a lesson, and then I'm going to go to Led Zeppelin and ask if I could play on tour with them. Right, right, right. That never that's, happens. But in the acting yeah. world, they think it does. It's that's like, exactly. No, but I, just, yeah, I don't understand boring. that. That's no. like a massive pet peeve for me to yes. think that you can go from zero to a hundred in a day. Yes, I agree. It takes it takes years and years and years of practice to get great at something before yep. you're even allowed. And I use the baseball analogy too. If you decide you want to play baseball professionally, you don't get a bat and a glove and then hit a ball and then get moved to the majors. <laughs> you, you well, know. I do think that there are two different kinds of people though too. Tell us. Okay. Um, Tell us. Tell you know, mm, 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 mm. Okay. I no. I think there's the real actor. You know. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but it's true. You mean I there's mean, natural? The, no, no, no. I'm talking about the real actor that loves it. Yeah. That oh, has passion yeah, yeah, for yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And then there's the people that just want to be a celebrity. Right. And I, I just think there's two different. Well, that's kinds for of sure. People. But the, even the real actor yeah. who loves it, yeah. do you feel they need to train? Of Always. Of course, yep. And I, the, my, one of my pet peeves is when someone says, well, Jennifer Lawrence didn't have acting classes. That's not true. It's not true, yeah. first of all. And they she had, had coaches, um, coaches on, set. on set. And they <laughs> trained all the time. It's yeah. really not true. And, and any time you pick one yeah. example out of 100,000, like, don't that's think of thing. yourself as being the only person that's going to make it without any training. Yeah. It's just almost, n it's just not going to happen. No, you need yeah. the training. You've got to train. You need, you need a technique. You need the stability of a technique. Yeah. yeah. I mean, That's you wouldn't want a brain you surgeon. Stability. You wouldn't want a brain surgeon no. operating on you that has not had any training. Oh, that would no. be scary. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> any, any, any yeah. field. Yeah, any you know, field. you want someone to fix your car who's never yeah. ever been inside a hood. You know, <laughs> a hood. <laughs> inside a hood. Ah, uh, uh, hood. Ah, uh, good one. Good, good one. It's, it's it's getting a little later in the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the are fire. He's with yes. us, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, next question. Let's go. Yeah, here we go. Directing. Um, here we go. A lot of productions take place in certain locations, right? If you're not in those locations, how does an actor know when they should move hmm. to <laughs> LA, to New York, to Atlanta? Um, those are or, good questions. Or can they stay where they are? And when would they know when they need to move from where mm -hmm. they are? Well, I wrote a book called How to Be a Star Right Where You Are years ago. And the concept around that was. Build your career in your own market where you are and maximize every opportunity you can in your own market first until you've sucked the life out of the market you're in. You've done every industrial, commercial, student yeah. film, short film, non-union feature you possibly can in your own market and then take that expertise and that training and your package to the bigger market. Now, you're, one of your teachers, Kurt Yu, yeah, he taught, oh God, I've always loved Kurt Yu. He was a guest in, in HWC a couple weeks ago, but he used to have something called small time, small, small, small market. market actor. Yep. And he was teaching exactly what I was teaching, um, how to build a career from where you are. Now, I think that this new COVID Zoom online coaching opens, I mean, uh, auditioning, opens up opportunities for actors all over to, to self-tape and maybe be considered for a role that shoots over here or shoots over there. Yeah. And that's going to happen sometimes. Mm -hmm. But in between that, your majority of your time should be spent building your career where you are. And then when you really have experience auditioning and learn, learning how to network, you got to be able to meet the film people in your own community, yeah. get films in local film festivals before you go into the major leagues in Hollywood and start competing there. 
And I think once you've maxed out your own market, that's the time to go. And Kurt I, was smart about that. Kurt did Kurt's, exactly that because he maxed out this market. Yes. He was here eight years. I think he studied with me for eight years, taught, yes. went to Atlanta, and now, now look I mean, at him. Look at him. Yeah. Marvel. Yep. I know. How he's cool. amazing. Yeah. Yep. And I also think cool. that when you're home, sometimes you're in a more affordable place. You might have the support of your family, or you might even still be living at home, especially if you're young and new. And so utilize those support systems while you're learning to act and building your materials and learning to audition before you jump into a big market like LA or New York, which is very expensive. And also save a lot of money. It's three times more expensive in <laughs> save LA. Save a lot of money. Save, save at least yeah. three years worth. Yeah. I would say oh, definitely good. save yeah. at least. At least. At least. Because you don't, you know, what I saw happening a lot is that they would get to LA, party their butt off, because mm -hmm. they're like, oh, I'm in LA, and then put together a package, join an acting class, and then spend money, spend money, spend money, and then they were out of money by the time everything was put together, mm -hmm. and then they had to go home. And that happened over and over and over again. And it, it's just really distressing. It's sad. And I, you know what, I, 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 I think the biggest problem is, is that a lot of people don't understand that the business and acting need to go together. And a lot of actors are like, well, I'm a great actor, so that should be enough. And the problem is, is that when they finally figure out that they have to do the business, they don't want to spend the money on it. Mm -hmm. And they don't realize that they have to. And then they end up going back home and they left their dream and now they're working for some IT companies. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even, sure. even going off of your <clears throat> guys' sad. instrument analogy, right? Like, as you do train and get better at playing guitar, you, you, Jimi Hendrix or, or, or whoever wasn't using the guitar they started with, right? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. you're gonna yes. upgrade your materials, you're gonna yeah. upgrade yeah. your, your yeah. surroundings, you're going yeah. to, uh, uh, you need your, your materials to grow with you, yes. right, in your talent. Yeah, I love that no. thing about the guitar. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Upgrade That's your it. guitar, damn it. Yeah. Upgrade your Upgrade guitar. Your guitar. <laughs> well, another problem is when you have a headshot that doesn't look anything like you. Yeah. Yes. You know, like it's like if you were going on a date, and you're expecting someone to walk in, and they they listed, they put a picture of them ten years ago on the on the dating app, and then what they walk in ten years or older. Is that like catfishing? Is that yeah, but you know, yeah. you're buying what you saw on the picture, and you're yeah. buying what you saw on the picture, yep. and the person that walks in the audition needs to look like the person in the picture. So you can't have old, outdated photos that don't look anything like you. We could call it uh, cast fishing. Cast fishing. <laughs> I got the singers. That's yeah. awesome. Kellen's so smart. <laughs> is. That was really cool. Cast fishing. Cast fishing. That's exactly what it is. It's a new business. There we go. Yeah. Like, Don't give anyone ideas. I know. Out there. I know. Oh my gosh. I know. Well, that that actually kind of leads into this, and and we have touched on it a bit. But uh, how how important are your your marketing materials, right? We, we've talked about it, like I said, Critical. a little bit. But just it's got to match. Yeah. You know, your demo reel needs to match your resume, which needs to match your photos, which needs to match you. And it takes a long time to do that. And Wendy's an expert mm -hmm. at helping people put that together. Yeah. Well, well, you've got a zillion ebooks. How many ebooks do you have? Seven. I've written seven books, wow. but first of all, I started a YouTube channel years ago. Yeah. Like Kurt has a YouTube channel. I love his YouTube channel. Yeah. It's called, his, Kurt's is called the yeah. Acting Career Center. I love it. You should subscribe to it because it's got so much good information. And my YouTube channel is called Secrets of a Hollywood Talent Manager. And so what I started doing is as I'm managing actors, I'm live uh, going on YouTube saying, don't do this, do this, don't do this, do this, just in my daily experiences as a manager with actors. But pretty soon there were so many questions under all the videos, like thousands and thousands of questions, and I really care about the actor getting the answers to those. Yeah. Because if they have information, they can have success, mm -hmm. if they put it into practice. So I created Talent Managers for Actors, and it's a Facebook group when I said, to like 100 friends of mine who are agents and managers, can you come help me answer these questions? Because I surely can't do it myself. <laughs> so they all said, yeah, we'll come help you, no problem. So they jump in, whenever they see a question, they answer, and now there's 82,000 members, which is amazing, because we're coaching yep. 82,000 people. And if you're not a member, you should. Talent you should. managers yep. for actors. But at some point, going in and asking a question and walking back out is not the same as a blueprint, a business plan. Yep. Like, here's what you do from A to Z, to become an actor. Yeah. You actually need a plan. Like if mm -hmm. you're gonna even go anywhere, 
You need, if you start any business, you yes. need a business plan. You don't just go winging it. You know, you need a marketing plan, a business plan, you need a budget. You need, so you, when you're an actor, you are a business. Mm -hmm. You are an acting business, a sole proprietor, and you're the product. So at HWC, I took what I know every single actor needs to do as an actor, and I wrote it down from A to Z. This is what you do. First this, your classes, then you gotta get your headshot, then your online profiles, and then you gotta learn your type, master this, master that, get your agent, you know, and then put it in a step-by-step -step plan. So people can take those online coach coaching videos and then supplement that with the live training I do every single week on Thursdays and Fridays. So no actor leaves without fully understanding who they are, their type, what it's gonna take to make it. They have a support system, they have a place to get guidance, other teachers come yeah, in. I just, think, I just think a lot of people jump over nickels to save pennies. Oh, you mean not being able to afford the course? Yeah, no. Well, that's well, listen. Well, I'm just saying that I'm not. I'm not but, saying not af not being able to afford it, not realizing the value and and how much it costs to build a business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not about affording or not affording. People build businesses all the time. And if you don't look at yourself as a business, yeah, yeah. you're like a store, you know? I mean, you have products in your store yeah. and they negotiate the price of success. And well, that's, our course that's is, what I'm saying. Our course is, if you think about it this way, and I've talked about it before, my course is $158 a month, right? For six months. Mm -hmm. That's $749 for the course. And for that price, they get 52 weeks of training, seven yeah. hours a week. Like, you can't get better than that. Yeah, no, it's, I think yeah. it's just ridiculous. So yeah. anybody who makes an excuse about not working with a coach who's going to teach you the business doesn't really want it. You know, and we, can't, we can lead them to the right information, but if they don't do the work, they won't get the results. We can lead them to the greatest booking coach in the business, but if they don't put the tools to use, they will not get the results. Mm -hmm. They can sign up for classes, but if they don't show up and give a thousand percent, they're not yeah. going anywhere. And the yep. people that are willing to work harder are the ones that are gonna get and it. And they need to stay there too. I mean, yeah. the people that, that did really well or were Jessica's students that have been with her for four years, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, three and four years, and the people that just got there, they expect so much. Let me know? tell you a little story yeah. about my client. In, in Hollywood Winter Circle, we have 3,000 actors taking the course, right? So I'm coaching the 80,000 at the TMFA and the 3,000 personally in the Winter Circle. So Shannon Lenahan oh, I like her. is a, oh God, he's so beautiful, but he's a working actor who was living in New York, and he wasn't booking anything at all. Okay. I said, go to Amy Linden. Okay. Because she teaches you how to book the frigging job. <laughs> so he starts training with her, and then he moves out to L.A. He's training with her, and then he books his first co-star in New York. No, Wu-Tang, whatever that is, on, on Hulu. And then he okay. comes back to L.A., and he books his first audition ever in L.A., General Hospital. Wow. And that's after working with Amy, right? So Coincidence? If you or is <laughs> success coaches okay. teaching actors how to be yeah. successful? Yeah. Like if, if, if this person teaches you how to learn how to act and she teaches you how to book and I'm teaching you how to make your career success, what else do you need? Either you want it or yeah. you're dreaming of it. Like we said, it's yep. a total package. Total trifecta. Okay. Uh, this next question is for uh, Amy. How, how do you make the leap from doing independent work and, and student films to, to auditioning for and booking professional projects? Well, you need an agent to book a TV show. Okay. But, you know, I talk to people a lot that they're never gonna find you if you just stay home, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I, I had this student, um, I, you know, I told everybody within a year's time, I want you to do 10 to 15 projects. I want you to tell me I've booked 10 to 15 projects. I don't care what they are, Right. you know? Well, there's this guy, he, he took me seriously as people who want to make it do. Um, and he booked this uh, really great job. Uh, it was a short film. And as they were in the editing bay cutting it, people from um, Jada Pinkett's team, Will Smith's team, yeah. uh, was walking down the hall and they heard a voice and they stopped in the editing bay and they saw his, uh, them cutting this actor. And they were like, who is that? And then they brought him in the next day and then he booked a pilot for Jada Pinkett and Will Smith. And I'm just saying that it, it ain't gonna happen if nobody knows that you exist. Yeah. And um, like Julianne Moore, her whole career was, was built on the festival circuit, mm -hmm. you know? 
Uh, you know, get out there, get uh, get to Sundance. Don't go to Sundance as an actor unless you're in something. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you're just another actor handing out a card, you know? Yeah. Um, be in something at Tribeca, at Sundance, you know? Um, or even slam dance, though. That's good, too. Slam dance. But, but be in something, but the only way to make that happen is you have to book at least 10 to 15 films a year and, and have people find you. Yeah. How are they going to find you? Don't just be sitting on the couch. I, it's just not going to happen. Well, and, and, you know, and unfortunately, people don't go to the theater anymore, you know? If you're, if you're in New York City and you're doing Broadway, that's amazing, or off-Broadway. Um, but people could find you on Netflix now. They could find you. And they don't know what kind of film it was, whether or not you were paid or not paid. Because it doesn't really matter, does it? Mm. It doesn't always matter. Right. I know like a, a misconception I've always run into for, for acting is like, oh, if you're an actor, uh, you, if you're a good actor, you can just cry on command, right? Mm -hmm. or, or one of those types of things. What is for somebody who's never taken an acting class, what can or what should they expect from their first acting class? Huh. So as we mentioned earlier, your first act acting class is not going to teach you how to cry. We have to build up to that. So mm -hmm. we're first because this is what most people want to do is they want to pick up a script and just start putting in either working off keywords or putting in just notes of how they should say it. And even Amy said it in the workshop yesterday. It's not, I quoted it, but it's not about how you're going to say it. It's about how you're going to live it, right? Mm. So it's, but in order to do that, we've got to, first of all, figure out how to even connect and find our point of view in things. So mm. the first stages of our class, if you jump into a class, it's literally going to be teaching you to be present with your partner. That's it right now. And then we'll teach you to kind of find a point of view about what's going on with this person. How do I feel about it? And how do I feel, uh, and how do they feel about it? And then we'll jump into starting to believe in like a smaller imaginary circumstance, you know, a circumstance that's not life threatening, something that's something that you can relate to right now. And then we'll teach you how to emotionally prepare. And, and that's an ongoing process. I mean, even in the book, the Miser book, he says it takes five years to perfect emotional preparation because it's a challenge. When we go through our daydreams, we're back there. And the goal is that we're constant, we're really present in that daydream and we're really feeling and touching and seeing and all of that. that but I will promise and tell you, the more you do this, it becomes easier and easier. You can mm -hmm. go back there and in three minutes cry. But at first, through doing emotional preparation, it's sometimes 20 minutes before you can go back there and you'll really feel the depth. Sometimes we prepare back there, and I know a lot of my students do this, and they're like, Jessica, I wish you would have called me out 15 minutes ago. I had it. And I said, you didn't have it. That was a surface level preparation. You need to go deeper <laughs> right now. So push through and trust and stay in that daydream. But this isn't something that just happens. A lot of actors think, oh, I can, oh, I can cry on demand. Let me put eye drops. You know, we... You feel it when someone's actually crying yes. and, and feeling, and it's, it's not always even about crying. It's about having right. the behavior. You don't have to have all these tears a lot of times. You can have the heaviness too. Yeah. Yes, but you have to be able to go there to do that. Yeah, crying is a result. Right? Correct. It's about yeah. That. Yep. And you have to go yeah. there again and again and again and again, depending on the director. Yeah, and that's the other thing I say. You can, in class, maybe come in two times and feel that fullness. You go on set, it's going to be much more difficult. So yeah. we need to consistently do it in class yeah, because before. Because it, it's yeah. based in the preparation. Yes. yes. So if you get a hit on a script right away and you start to cry right away, that's actually bad. Because you don't know, because you'll be like, oh, I could cry now. All right, I got that set. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got that set because I cried when I picked up the script. Yeah. Yeah. But the truth of the matter is, it was a superficial attack on it. Yep. You didn't really find where it was in a deep, connected way. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to be able to repeat it over and over and over again. Yeah. So it's actually the worst thing that could happen yeah. is if you... Uh, Yep. Get an initial. And also, if you don't have a deep technique yeah. to get there, you're going to be thrown off by the reader, thrown off by other things. Yep. The lights. And yeah. Some yeah. direction from the director. Yep. Yep. Right? Oh, yeah. Redirection, rewriting, something else is going to throw you off. You have to have technique. Yep. Now, well, I, I, that's, I'd say, like, using a sport analogy, like we have, I can teach you the mechanics of shooting a basketball, but that doesn't mean you're just going to make every shot that you take now, yeah. right? You, you're going to have to practice shooting again and again and again yeah, in exactly. order to get better at it. Well, you think about those guys at the free throw line, right? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's two yeah. minutes left in the game. Yeah. Millions of people watching. That's like you going. Yeah. That's like you going to network mm -hmm. for the final, final. You know, that's why a lot of my people came out of nowhere uh, and made it. 
because they practiced that much. Mm -hmm. Because you have to practice not only in, in the class, you have to practice in the circumstance. Mm -hmm. So, like, I could teach you how to book a job. Jess could teach you how to, how to act. And Wendy could, could help you get the audition by putting your package together. But if you don't understand what it's like in the room, mm -hmm. yeah. like, but the, and so many things happen in the waiting room, you know? Are you, ca are you giving the job to somebody else? Are you casting somebody else yeah. in your job, you know? You're like, oh, she looks, for the, she looks exactly like I picture. That's it, you know, you just gave her your job. So um, it's, it's just really, it's really just being very, very clear that there's so many different parts to preparation. Yeah to booking a job. The amount of people who say that they're off book, and I'm like, all right, well, let's let's shoot this in a walk and talk then. And all of a sudden, now they oh, have yeah, to walk yeah, yeah, and do yeah. the lines and like. But wait, I practiced yeah. that sitting down. Right, yes. exactly. I didn't practice that doing anything. Yeah. yeah. I swear I, I knew these lines. I can't do it now. <laughs> yeah. I can't it's, do it now. Yeah. Uh, ladies, thank you so much. Uh, uh, this was really a great wealth of information from all of you. Please, uh, for people who want to follow you or learn more or, or um, get more involved, uh, uh, how can they? And, and please, starting with you, Amy. Okay, um, find me on uh, Instagram at Amy Linden, L-Y-N-D-O-N. And if you have watched this, then DM me and I will give you a coupon code, a special one for you, Ooh. to get... Um, uh, a, per a very large percentage off of my Udemy course, because you could study this technique at home, um, me teaching it to you on the course. Um, you could also find me at thelindentechnique.com, go to the store. You could train with me if you sign up for the intensives, but they sell out quickly, um, so get it, get going, get in line. You can get my book on um, Amazon, my audio book on Amazon, as well um, in Audible. And um, you could join my actor's um, site called theactorstoolbox.net, and you, you can get a free week, um, a trial week. Uh -huh. I'm coaching about 115 people on there. Uh, you learn the technique on there. I've got lectures teaching the technique on there. Um, but don't just get on and off. It is a library. So if you want it, you'll watch everything and you'll listen to everything. There's also motivational minutes on there because we really could lose our motivation a lot of times. And so I want to motivate you to keep going. Um, and, you know, you could find me. I'm literally all over the Internet. So um, if you want to find me, find me. Awesome. Oh, yeah, very true. I want to find you. Yeah, you found yeah, me, baby. You found me. So, if you want to get in touch with me, you can go to Instagram, and in my bio, there's a tap link, and you can click on that, which will lead you to my eBooks, to the Hollywood Winter Circle Academy, to the Talent Managers for Actors, and you should join all of that and download as much information as you possibly can from me so that you can learn how this business works, get the, the success strategy that you need and implement it, and let me help you get on television because I don't think there's anybody in the business who teaches actors how to do this business better than I do. So you wanna get as close to me as you can and work with me and I will help you navigate from your couch to the television set. <laughs> and just Okay, so you can find me at hoodschoolofacting.com, H-O-U-D-E, schoolofacting.com. We have an Instagram, we have Facebook. Um, you can also find me on the Talent Managers for Actors. Um, we do both online and in-person classes. We have, I think, up to 35 classes a week now. Jeez. So many. Um, <laughs> we teach Meisner. We have many. I think there's 17 Meisner online classes uh, that we offer. We do script analysis, self-tape. We do improv. We have dialects class. We have scene study. Um, we have all of that. That's amazing. So I just want to say thank you so much, Kellen, for having us here. And, you know, Jessica, thank you for having an amazing school that teaches them such a strong foundation in acting, but also gives them so much value for their money. And, you know, I, I've never seen anyone offer for $200 16 classes. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. If you guys don't take advantage of it, you're just downright stupid. Well, that's, oh, well, that's true. I'm sorry, but, you know, I'm from New York. I could say that. <laughs> I'm from New York, too, and I second that emotion. <clears throat> no, but you, what you're training is just it's phenomenal. And 
thank you, Amy, for being an expert at teaching actors how to book the job, because ultimately, they don't want to sit up, dream about it. They want to be on television. So thanks for getting them on TV. I send everybody I, I work with to Amy so that they actually book work and get on television. But if you're out there and you have this dream, uh, you know, we all believe in you. And it's, it's such an amazing career, and you have an amazing spirit, an amazing gift, and something wonderful to offer the world. So you need to believe in yourself and put yourself out there and don't get in the way of what you're dreaming of because you can be your worst saboteur. So my suggestion is like really honor your calling, give it everything you've got, and believe that you can make this happen because you can, and get the support and guidance that you need to help you, but never, ever, ever give up on this dream because it's the purpose of your life. And we love you and you want, we want you to be successful, so. Uh, so uh, you can follow me at, at Kellen Boyle one on Instagram. I'm you following know, Kevin. I'm following Kellen already. You know who has the actual at Kellen Boyle? Just the, oh. me, and I just forgot the password. So now it's at Kellen Boyle one. <laughs> oh, no. I'm an idiot. Oh, funny. Uh, uh, or you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, Script Tips for Actors. Yes. Um, but if you like this video and you'd like to have more videos like this, please like and subscribe to this channel. Uh, we're going to try to be putting out more in the future. Thank you guys so much. Thank really you. appreciate all of you. Thank you, Kellen. Yeah. That's your good, Kellen. Thank you. Thank you, guys.